first and foremost, let's take a close look at the packaging. You can see the McFarlane Platinum Edition sticker right there. DC Multiverse logo with Azrael Batman armor. There's a look at the figure. All it looks like it comes with is a stand and a, and a card. Here's a side, Azrael Batman armor from Batman Knight's, Knight's End. Here's the back of the box. A picture of red Azrael Batman armor. Would have preferred if they put the blue one on there. We'll discuss that more later. Here's this side of the box. Azrael Batman armor, DC Multiverse, and a little QR code you can scan. And in case you're wondering, here's the barcode. And yeah. Alright. Let's open this figure up and let's get a closer look at it, shall we? Here's a look at the figure out of the box. Now, let's get a closer look at it. First, here's a look at the legs, which I believe are reused from the original Nightfall Batman, which I do not have because that came out way before I was collecting and is on the aftermarket now for well over $100, and I don't want to fork over that much. You can see he has the flamethrowers, which are just connected all the way to the back, and that's how he is on both arms. You can see right here with the chest. He has the his bat symbol and a very well hidden diaper piece, a figure diaper that is actually just looks like it's part of the figure. You can see all the sculpted detail on the belt. I believe this is just like yellow, like a dark yellow mustard colored plastic. You can see the rubber kind of that he used for this is like a lighter gray. And you see on the hands that it's just a light blue plastic and has a nice shiny blue. And let's look at, take a look at the head. If I get this guy's kind of big, so hold on a second. Let me let me let me change positions. If I can understand. Here's a look at the head. You can see it has a nice sculpted paneling and lines right here it's little small little bat ears and the red visor and it's just like that all the way around and you can see in there on the neck you can see the panel lining and on the chest you can see this part it is very similar to his first his nightfall costume with some minor tweaks and then of course the back of the figure uh the world's scariest cape they look like giant claws coming out of his back, which you can see. And also, these literally, I'll explain how these go in later. But you can see the detail right here for the, for the fires for the flamethrower. And it's just all blue on the back. Nothing else there. You can see little, the continued sculpt detail from the buckles. And his little leg flails, like flail things. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's get a closer look at that cape that looks like it'd murder somebody. And all these look the same, so we're just going to look at one of them. So you can see the nice panel sculpted detail right here. This part, it looks like it'd be able to move, but it can't. I wish it could. You can see the top part right here. It's got the nice scope to detail with you can see like little pins where it looks like paneling on uh, panel lines and all the way down and this is like a hard plastic so this is very sharp so i've already poked myself with this before so be careful when putting this on speaking of putting it on it just pegs in you can see, see there's a hole right there and there's a hole right there and it just pegs in like that and it'll sit in place and it they don't fall off they're snug which is a good sign i was worried that these were going to be kind of loose but nope they fit on him just fine let me lower the camera just a little bit no they're not loose they fit in just fine now let's look at the accessories that he comes with and it is a lackluster set of accessories we'll, we'll get to that right now First off, he comes with a trading card with the picture with the artwork that's on the back of the box, and there's a picture of the common version. And on the back, you can see a read-up of the bio of the character, 
and his name, Jean-Paul Valley. And you can see it's from Azrael Batman Armor from Batman Night's End. And if you want to read that, if, I, if the camera will focus on it, you can read that right here. It might be a little blurry. Hold on one second. All right, uh, let's see if this is better. You can read that right there. You can pause the video. And there. And he also comes with the patented DC Multiverse trade display stand. Nice DC logo right there. Really wish they would start putting character logos. One singular peg hole and nothing on the back. But little dots. Yep, that's it. That's all you get. We'll talk more about that when it comes to how he looks with other figures. But first and foremost, let's take a look at his articulation. His head can go all the way around. It can look up that much and look down that much. So it kind of just looks like he's trying to look underneath his clothing. Or just kind of look down. But all he sees is this collar piece right here. His arm can go up a little less than 90, but is limited due to the shoulder pad. And his arm can go this far up and this far back. But the armor and shoulder pads and all that limit it just a little bit. And also, you get that nice rotator cuff right there. Mine's a little loose, but it works just fine. You can see it's a nice metallic gold. And traditional McFarlane wrist articulation where it can go, it, well, it can go all the way around, hinge up and down, and kind of, well, the flamethrower gets in the way. But you, you get the gist, you know what I mean. He has double jointed elbows with a semi deep bend, but all the big clunky bits get in the way, so you can't really bend his arm too much. He can arch back that far. And he can hunch forward that far, which is for a McFarlane figure that is really good. Most of them can't even get that far. And considering that he has all this giant armor on him and he feels big, clunky, and heavy, this is actually kind of surprising. He also gets a good tilt at the, at the torso joint and at the waist. You can even tilt him even more. And he can go all the way around, but I'm not going to attempt it because I don't know what will happen if I do. And also at the waist, you can kind of get there. You can kind of get the joint at the waist to go. It's real tight, so be a little careful with it just because of all the rubber padding and all that kind of stuff that's on him. And he can do a perfect split. Double jointed knees. And not really any, a little bit of, a little bit of swivel up here at the upper leg. Um, on a figure like this, uh, as a thigh cut about right here where this is, or you know, Probably would have been better than that, this. Just putting my two cents out there. And traditional McFarlane ankle balls that can go up and down. All the way around. And pivot. Now let's go back to talking about the accessories. Because all he comes with is a display stand and a trading card. That's it. Now... For this, I probably would have preferred some open claw hands instead of these fist hands because wait, what's he, he's gonna punch with this? I mean, he does look like he has like spiky bits, but pow pow. Like some open claw hands would have been nice or just something else. Mostly the open claw hands. You, I, I wouldn't even really consider his cape of doom or whatever that is. And accessories, because technically it's gold is partially part of the figure. But let's look at some size comparisons and see how he scales with other figures. I have one figure in particular that I want to see how he scales with, and if he's smaller than him, it shows my issue. Here he is with the common version of Azrael Batman, which I don't have. Here he is with the Suit of Sorrows version of Azrael, and you can see they are just about the same size, which is perfect. And here he is with Janky Legs Robin. Here he is with the oversized Batman who takes up all the room because of his cape. And that's what I was afraid of. 
If you look closely, he is taller than Azriel. Technically, he's not supposed to be. Man, I can't wait for the nightfall black and gray version of Batman to get here. It can't arrive sooner enough. And for some movie comparisons, here he is with Batfleck from Batman v Superman. And that is actually a pretty good height. And here he is with the man that puts babies in microwaves. And here he is with everyone's favorite, Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. Hey, those are some good looking claws you got there. Can I see? Oh, wait a minute. Your hands are glued shut. Man. That must be difficult. That must be really hard. Oh, was it? Ow. Was it something I said? My final thoughts of Azrael Batman. Um, let's see here. Um, so far, way better than the first one they released. Although the legs are reused from that, it doesn't bother me. I like the darker colors of the platinum versus the common one. Um, the common one is his last appearance. It's the second suit he, second version of that suit he wore. The blue one is the first one that he wore, and that's the one that I mainly wanted the most. If I happen to see the common, I might pick it up. I'm thinking about it. But, uh, my one gripe is needing more accessories. Some open hands, or just something. Other than that, the figure's phenomenal. The sculpting de work detail on this, the panel lines on the death cape, the look of the flamethrowers, and how the little, uh hoses connect to the back it all looks good the sculpting of the symbol the coloring it looks great just he only comes with a stand and a trading card a card actually not a trading card just a card some open clawed hands would be nice or just just something extra um but other than that no this figure i would recommend this picking it up i found mine at my local walmart um, technically, they're, I want to say street dated for beginning of May, but people have been getting them early. I picked mine up. Uh, sometimes you might have to ask the employee if they're in the back, hang in the barcode. But other than that, just a quick review of this figure, how to get it out there. If I see the comment, I'll let you know. I'll probably, if I do the, see the comment, I'll probably do like a quick little YouTube short or just a comparison video between the two because there are color differences. But other than that, no. Uh, folks, this is, this is just a little quick review. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share my content. Do all the YouTube stuff. And as always, folks... My final thoughts is this figure is crimson approved, hands down. Have an amazing day, and as always, folks, crimson out.